total elbow replacement, patient selection and perspectives. The numbers of elbow replacements reported to European joint registries is falling when replacement surgery of all the other major joints continues to increase. The aim of this paper is to present the explanations which have led to changes in my clinical practice and may perhaps change your own perspectives for the surgical treatment of elbow arthritis in your patients. Elbow replacements for arthritis were developed 50 years ago in the late 1960s when I went to medical school. The uniaxial hinge designs used for the elbow were the same as those developed at the same time for the knee. The results were also the same. As the elbow and knee don't move as a perfect hinge, these implants failed early with serious consequences. A consensus was reached for the knee and by the end of the 1970s, we had the condylar shaped implants we use today. However, there was no such agreement for the elbow. During the 1970s, a wide range of implants was developed, including less constrained linked hinge designs, as well as unlinked implants, which were not joined by an axle mechanism. And the question whether we should use linked or unlinked designs still remains a matter for debate today. 40 years later. Both linked and unlinked designs proved equally capable of providing satisfactory results in the severely disorganized rheumatoid joints in which they were originally used. However, by the mid 1990s, newly developed effective medications meant that we rarely then saw patients with the severe destructive degenerative changes which had been characteristic of rheumatoid arthritis. The X-ray appearances of rheumatoid joints became similar to those of hypotrophic osteoarthritis, but by the beginning of this century, it had become recognized that the results of total elbow replacement for osteoarthritis were much less satisfactory than those for severe erosive rheumatoid disease in the past. It was also recognized that the numbers of serious complications associated with total elbow replacement remained high much higher than those reported in other joints, and the difficulties in treating these complications are well known. This may explain why surgeons treating elbow arthritis continue to use the non-implant procedures they would no longer recommend for arthritis in other joints, including excision arthroplasty, despite the reported unpredictability of these procedures and the absence of satisfactory long-term data. Those of us who can still remember the 1960s can also remember the impact arthroscopy has had on our understanding of joint pathology. In the 1970s, the location of osteophytes seen on x-rays of the elbow was interpreted as demonstrating that osteoarthritis begins in the ulnohumeral joint. However, arthroscopy has since shown us that articular cartilage degeneration begins in the radiocapitalar joint and is not related to either the location or the extent of osteophytes seen on x-rays. Our perspective of elbow arthritis consequently changed and led us to develop components to resurface the lateral compartment of the elbow, which we began to use in 2005. Encouraging early results have been maintained long-term, which has also been the experience of colleagues in a wide range of their patients, including manual workers. We now therefore use the lateral resurfacing elbow as our primary implant option for most of our patients with elbow arthritis, reserving total joint replacement as a revision option, and for patients with bone loss due to either untreated inflammatory arthritis, which is now rare, or increasingly in trauma.